I'm going to talk more about continuity. And I want to show you the control polygons that you're going to see when it comes to continuity and minimum requirements with those control polygons. And I'll just simply use a curve to demonstrate this. Now here I have a single segment. Let me pull up some geometric analysis on this. You can see it's a single segment, third order or second degree curve. Now this magenta uh, basic uh, polygon that you see here is the control points or control vertices and then these are the holes or um, the vectors in between each one of those control points. And what this basically means, especially on this curve you see here, is this is the slope coming off of this point. This is the slope coming off of this point coming back. Now, if I were to actually draw a line from this point over to here and measure that line angle, you'd notice that that line angle from here to here is smooth. It's tangent. Okay, It's zero degrees. And that's basically what this slope is controlling. So this second degree curve, I'd be able to manipulate just simply the tangency at this opposite end. Now, that being said, I'm going to go in and I'm going to use what's called a 3D curve using control points to show you what's going on. So first thing is, I'm going to pick this point. Once I select that point, you'll notice that I get this little circle with that dot in the middle. And this is indicating that I've actually selected geometry, so this is tied to something. I'm just going to come back here and I'm going to pick again. As soon as I select, you'll notice that it goes to point. So this is telling me that here I am located point-wise on this curve, or at send point. If I come in and select one more go, you'll see now this has some curvature to it. This is now uh, the same exact mathematical uh, equation as this. It's slightly different, obviously a different shape position. But what this allows me to do is I can come over to this flag now and I can right mouse click and I can say tangent continuity. Now you'll notice that I have enough math here for tangency. You'll see that this hull is now aligned with this hull off of this curve. These are tangent across this point. So if I look at the, the, the porcupines on these two curves, what I expect to see is the porcupine at the shared endpoint is going to be, uh, it's going to touch, they're going to be parallel, but the lengths are going to be different because the radius at this point from this curve to this curve are different. The only thing that these two curves share, once again, is a slope. So this tangent vector at their endpoints are, are parallel, which means that this is now parallel. If I come in and manipulate this, you'll notice that I can't move it up and down. All I can move it is along that slope vector. And as you can see, as I move this, I can tweak this. I can get this shape and boom, right there, a little bit more tweaking maybe. Let me zoom way up on it. You'll see that I have now, in theory, a curvature continuous boundary condition from one to the other. Again, this is in theory. Mathematically, it's not curvature continuous. In theory, it is. And the reason is, is that you can see it looks geometrically the same, but mathematically, there's, no, there's technically not truly enough math in order to attain true curvature continuity here. I mean, you can set these, these two and get them perfectly and get everything aligned perfectly and get it to go, but in the system, you'll notice that I don't have enough control points on this curve, I can right mouse click, to go up to curvature continuity. I just don't have it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick again another position out here. Just drag this in, drag this in a little bit. And now that I have this other point selected, if I right mouse click, you'll notice I can go into curvature continuity. So here I have a true curvature continuous, meaning Mathematically and geometrically, everything is perfect across this point to be curvature continuous. And as you can see, my envelope curve touches, my 
Porcupine quill is the same length, it's parallel, and it touches here, so I have G0, G1, and G2. Now, when I look at this control polygon, this curvature is being controlled. You'll notice that I can't, I have very little that I can actually do with these first two control points as far as where they can go. They're sort of locked in. Remember, this one is locked in along the slope here. You'll see that as I move this control point, this control point needs to move in order to maintain the curvature continuity across this point. And with this one, again, this is locked down to hold that curvature at this point. How would I get this to look a little smoother? Well, what you need to do is, is you, need, you would need to go in there and manipulate this endpoint. And you'll see this endpoint is giving me the actual, let's move this over here, move this over here. This endpoint over here is giving me the actual G3 control that I'm looking for. So to get G3 control, I'm going to go ahead and draw in another point. Let's put it in over here, lock that endpoint down, and start manipulating this control point. So it's with these control points, these additional control points you can see here as I start manipulating these two that I'm getting closer and closer to G3 continuity. Because now I'm taking that rate of acceleration across that endpoint. There we are. And aligning it so it has that acceleration of curvature from one curve to the next. Now, you'll see here I don't have a, a G3 option. Um, you can get that with an ISD license, a special super powerful tool on top of the regular good old fashioned uh, freestyle. But uh, I don't have that option, so in order to maintain G3 or get G3, I'd have to eyeball it like what I'm doing here. So um, that control point is basically what you're controlling when you are changing the continuities, whether it's G0, G1, G2, G3. And it's making sure that you have enough of these control points in order to get the, uh, the curve or the surface to flow correctly or cleanly or nicely into the next curve or surface. So in this case, I had to go out to get a, two G, a true G3. I needed to have my G1 position locked down or I'm sorry, G0 position locked down. Here's my G1, here's my G2, and you'll note when I put this one in, I, I was able to get my acceleration, modify that acceleration bit, and there's my G3. So it's just a question of now tweaking these to get, the, get it to go the way that I want it to go. Again, I don't have an option in here just to set it. You can see there, it's just plain old G3, G2. Now, if I, as, I, as I play with this, I'll, I'll get this thing to go and it's uh, it's a little tricky to get G3, true G3, without having a button to push and say, hey, make it G3. It's it, Albeit it's possible, it's feasible. You can see here, now I have a very nice smooth transition, but it's, it's, uh, it's a little tricky.